part two of readings 27th of September 2024 we got cut off due to my iPhone storage issues again oh, now we have battery issues let me just take us to go and find the cord the cord the cord keep us in um, productivity can't actually remember where my cord is so there is that Let's wander about in a daze of confusion till we find the court. Here we go. Right. By the gods. Sun now. Right, are we still filming? Yes, I think we are. Right, I was going on about, as I always go on about, how I'm waiting for the one, but not on the internet. So that summarizes it. We'll leave it at that. Um, this is someone, someone I've been waiting to show up in my life, really all my life. So sometimes I, I go into fits of real despair because I'm nearly 60. So I don't actually, in all honesty, think that it will ever really happen for me, given that, you know, I keep attracting men who are unavailable or workaholics or married or avoidant or approach avoidant or in the case of the the last former lover from you know 10 years ago was um sadistic and machiavellian and just fucking awful and yet i held on to that love for a long time much longer than i should have so the important lesson for me now is to not hold on to people who show themselves cruel and unworthy. There is that. That was a very heavy lesson, um, very heavy. And um, so, yes, so we were, we were reading from, um, oh, dear goddess, Can't find it now. No, that was twenty. That was a share. Where were we? We were reading from. I think it was from two years ago. Twenty twenty two. Yes, two years ago. So a lot's happened in two years. A lot's changed in two years for me quite exponential growth and changes. It's a bit astonishing at times. Right, where were we? Yes, I was talking about how I prefer when my spirit people communicate with me, my angels, my spirits, higher dimensional entities that they speak in plain English in a way that cannot be confused or misinterpreted and isn't cryptic because it's a waste of my time and energy having to sit for hours trying to carefully pass out the meanings and figure it out. Ain't nobody got time for that, babies. And I'm the same in like ordinary communication. You know, be honest and open and upfront with me. I don't do second guessing or riddles or guessing games or just just be upfront. I can't stand um, intrigue or sneaky kind of underhanded modes of communication. I mean, yes, I'm kind of guilty of it in a way putting things out into my YouTube videos, but that's because people aren't communicating. It's the only way to get my side of, you know, my interactions out, what I'm wanting from people really. And 
maybe that is a bit weird and toxic too as my, my psychiatrist seems to think it is but you know the truth is the truth and um i adhere to you know my own integrity speaking about how i feel about how things how how i'd like things to be for my own personal love languages and love interactions which as i said may never happen given that i'm older now and my situation has not really improved like financially i'm still trapped in kind of my own hellscape through no fault of my own because i did try very hard with the silver smithing to get get things happening so it's a, it's a great pity but anyway life goes on and life always finds a way babies always just give it time time i don't think i have enough of could be wrong about that too i've been wrong before I thought at one stage of my life that I would never have my mind back. And in another stage of my, my, my life, I thought I would never love again. And I have loved again, differently and more powerfully than ever before. So there is that. And uh, it's beautiful and it's poignant and it's astonishing and it's a bit powerful, quite frankly. Sometimes I stand in awe and think, I don't know how you did that, Tanya, how you got yourself through that. And um, the people who truly love me and choose to be in my life are still here. And the rest, over time, got sloughed off for whatever reasons, right or wrong, that was necessary at the time. I don't keep abusers in my in my in a circle it's precious preciously guarded because it's about um, maintaining equilibrium and my mental health and um, yeah my, my very safety and being surrounded by people who vibe with me find your vibe find your tribe am I right people who are kind to me and who in turn I am also kind to and it creates a community of like-minded souls who um, support each other and nurture and nourish each other and, if necessary, protect each other, have each other's backs, front sides and uh, enjoy each other's company when we're out together, me doing my wild shamanic dance or in with my in a circle friends when we're out you know going going on little day trips or enjoying life together being surrounded by people who treat you with goodness and kindness is survival and thrival by the way you can't exist when you're surrounded by mortal enemies you can i mean you can exist i did it but it doesn't make for a very um lovely happy, sanguine, comfortable life. So, anyway, I carry on with our readings from 2022. Oh my God, synchronicity. Just listening to a lecture and the professor is mentioning the underworld and not looking back because Bricky and I were talking about Hades and Persephone and Demeter and the themes connected to winter and spring and the underworld. On Kurt Jai Mungle's podcast, Ian Gilchrist versus John Fairvark on God, meaning, consciousness and being. And I really enjoy Kurt Jai Mungle's podcast, The Theories of Everything. I highly recommend him. He has the most wonderful speakers. I haven't actually listened to him for quite a long time now. It's been probably about six months. I don't know if he's not pumping out videos or if he's on a break or what's going on, but um, all his material is up on YouTube. And uh, I highly, 
highly recommend highly recommend wonderful man he even reached out to me personally when i got cranky with him had a fight with him about how I perceived um, one of his guests was poorly treated. We won't go into it. We won't dredge up the old bones again and lay them waste again. But he, um, he, he actually approached me personally and I was very deeply astonished and honoured by that. A gentleman. So, yes, I'm happy to support Kurt Jai Mungle and his Theories of Everything podcast. Um, I was supporting it before that event, actually, but I'm happy to continuously support wonderful, wonderful human to you, Kurt Jai Mungle. Brecky wrote back, I know, laughing emoji. I was trying to express my thankfulness for these connections with you, not bothered by time or distance. So it is in the great soup. Synchronicity, the collective, the eternal seas we are all in. And then she put a little fish emoji, Neptune and or Poseidon, love heart. She's such a beautiful woman and a beautiful soul. Brechy tit to you, my darling. I don't think she watches my YouTube videos, but if she does, it's out there. Much, much love for you. I write back, I'm delighted to share my spiritual motifs, gifts, insights with you. And you interpret them so masterfully, so it is I that am very grateful. As to Poseidon, father of Aphrodite, I have a new friend I met at my hairdresser who very kindly paid for my hairdo as a gift. Her name is Irene, who is currently visiting the Oracle of Delphi in Greece. <clears throat> We've lost it. Where did it go? I asked her to put in a good word for me with the oracle, and I have a sense that she has, or soon will be doing so, as the spirits are very innovated and excited around me. I could actually feel the spiritual innovation and activation. I thought, that lady has been to the oracle. I could feel the, the changes all around me. Little Meshuggana Tanya in Brisbane, Australia, which fomented decades of actual hell for me, felt I needed all the help from the gods I can get. Indeed, I do. Still to this day. <laughs> I wonder what the oracle will tell us, if anything, laughing out loud. Well... That was two years ago in September and yes, a lot happened in the last two years. But really, really it kind of was a lid off a pressure cooker after the 1st of August 2023 when my beautiful Beauregard died. It was like he took all the, the evil and the ugliness and the shit with him that day and it was a very evil day as those vets were profoundly fucking evil towards us but it was like it kind of all got taken up and transmuted and or removed from me and I have struggled I did struggle for months after but I'm coming out of that now I'm coming out of that Hades hellscape and it was the winter of my discontent because he died in winter and um Spring came and my beautiful friend said, I love you and I, I love you back and all the enemies that were cycling around me in, in, in the dance space that night all slunk away and I'm a bit astonished by that too. Makes me wonder if they were told to fuck the hell off and stay away from me or whether they just decided that 
they weren't going to dare poison yet another dance space for me like they did at Irish Murphy's in the casino. So there is that. It's all a bit astonishing, actually. But um, maybe just that little spell that Scott created by saying, I love you, and me responding, I love you too, was enough for those enemies to realise we don't have any power over her here. Here she is loved. It's nothing like love to be the greatest, most powerful force of nature of all, is it not? I'm grateful for my beautiful friends. To you all, alter egos and ramjet and the Brooklyn Standard. To you all, my darlings. And remember, as always, never ever let the bastards grind you, me, us down. We fight for each other with great corazon, my babies. Yes, I know I'm a crazy old chickie and I get a bit silly sometimes. I know, I know who I am, but I love you anyway. Nothing will ever, ever destroy the love I feel for you, ever. It remains till the day I die and I'll take it with me when I go to. Of that you can be certain. I'm getting all emotional here. I want to cry. Oh. <laughs> I guess that's what the oracle want, wants to tell us. Hold on to the love. A platonic, agape, unconditional, universal, sweet love. Hold it precious. And... Uh, be happy for me when I finally find a man who is willing and able and available and um, heart-centred and genuine to want me as a mutually exclusive sexual partner as well for the long term. No one night flings for Mama T. She did that back in the day and it wasn't soul nourishing. It was empty and kind of perverted and cruel and sick. Mama T's been celibate for 10 years, well, nine years, nine and a half years. And um, so she knows if she blossoms out, activates her sexuality like the beautiful strelitzia flower that bloomed for the first time. It's also symbolic, by the way. Bird of paradise, babies. <laughs> if she does activate that, it has to be with the one who has proven over and over again, but with genuine, heartfelt, sincere intentions and attentions that he chooses me over and beyond and above all other women because I'm done being secondhand, left over, um, cold porridge from someone else's table simply won't won't be actively choosing that but friendships will be maintained and sustained because true friends are hard to find too by the way very rare and precious in my world It's a bit of a hard thing when, 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 when one falls in love with one's friends. I've done it before and it was a hard thing back in the day, 32 years ago too, but we navigated through it, my friend Jared and I, and we got past all that intense emotion and we remained solid friends and now he's my brother, he's family. And I'm grateful that we were never lovers, that it was never kind of tainted by that kind of well it wouldn't have worked out anyway because has to be what has to be desired on both sides of the the relationship the friendship so but you know what I'm saying it's like 
I am the queen of the unrequited and the unavailable, as I said to that African woman, Philippa, on Friday night after she finally got annoyed about her husband sexually harassing me. It got too much even for my nervous system. So I finally flipped out and said, I'm not interested in your husband, I'm not interested in anyone else's husband. I'm wanting my own man. I'm the queen of the unrequited, the queen of the unavailable, and the queen of the damned. And I just walked off, went, in, went to take off my shoes and my pantyhose and the ladies lose and literally ran out of there because it was just too fucking weird. It's just too fucking, that whole thing was just beyond bizarre. However, I'm also the queen of the bizarre. I ride above, rise above it, ride through it. I'm used to it. But um, it was odd. It was odd. Very odd. I mean, what kind of a wife lets a husband in her presence continuously harass and flirt and cajole and annoy another woman all night long? Am I right? It's very odd. Anyway, I kind of, <coughs> I kind of have to laugh about it now. Cousin True Mama T style, bing, bang, boom, baby, I handled it, but it's like I could have done without all that stress and pressure. I really could have. Anyway, if they turn up again and decide to annoy me, I'll just remove myself or go home early or speak to the security guards who are very wonderful and protective of me and just say, hey, these people were giving me the heebie-jeebies. I don't want to complain all the time. You know, that's the other thing. I go out to have a nice time, not for these fucking cosplay, psychosexual dramas that I did not even in invite. It's just odd, very odd. Anyway, shake it off. Shake it off like a British nanny. That's a bit sick, isn't it? Shake it off like a wet dog. There you go. Nobody gets hurt when a wet, wet dog shakes itself off. What do you say, Charlie? She says, I hear you, Mama T. I hear ya. Did you poo on me? Because I've got drips of water and they're not... Yes, you did, you little demon bird. I tell you what, Mama's going to buy you at... She got, she's just looking at me going, Don't call me a demon bird, Mama. I can't help it. I might actually find out if there are nappies for birds because it's getting intense. It's getting intense, Charlie. There's so much poopykins. Right, by the gods. So Brecky continues to reply. Getting hot now too. So if you see your T symbol as a scythe, it is a tool given to you to cut things away. Good things, as in fruit and veggies, and bad things, as the abscess you and your daughter have. Also the way you are working your jewellery and everything. A forebode of harvest. Well, unfortunately my jewellery didn't sell, so I harvested nothing from all that hard labour. Just going to put on the aircon. Oh, Charlie, again? My goodness. My goodness. Well, you know that that's too much, don't you? She's stretching. Stretching her little wings out and looking at me. Right. So I replied, bear in mind this was two years ago, today, two years ago. I welcome a loving, rich, bountiful harvest after decades in the fecund darkness of the subterranean torture chambers imposed by my abusers and the external society. Powerful magic 
is coming back to full vibrancy again. Indeed it is. It's very, very powerful and potent and beautiful to my beloved fellow witches and shamans and high priestesses and magicians and mages and wise ones. Own your own magic. Use it wisely. Love is the law. Love under will, by the way. And harm ye none, so it is done with competition with none. Mama T has spoken. Look at you, Charlie. You is a pretty birdie. Sun's come out. We could go in the garden again. Sit out in the garden with the Charlie. See if we get more kookaburra visits, visitors. Brechi tit. Oh no, I replied to Brechi. It also appeared on a very potent holy day, Rosh Hashanah, Jewish New Year. The day where the Torah portion is about Abraham being willing to sacrifice his son, which is still astonishing to my mind even to this day. And instead, God sent a ram after testing his faith. So powerful symbology. My daughters will never be sacrificed by me. I love them more than God. And how God made me suffer for that. What kind of God makes you suffer for loving your own children more than him? Am I right? It's made me question who it is I'm actually worshipping and have emblazoned on my arm, by the way. <clears throat> but, all good. The wounded mother and daughter frolicked with my handsome friend around the gallery of modern art on one of the holiest days of the Jewish year. And that too was spiritual, although Crystal and Jared would not allow me to ask a young Shinto priest for a photo of us both. So I took one of him anyway, as he was absorbed in watching a video about the artist, so oblivious. And you know what? I should have asked for a photo and asked for a blessing from him because I'm not fussy what path you are on, what faith you have. A blessing from a priest in any religion of any creed is always welcomed by me. But they were afraid that he'd get a bit embarrassed or weirded out. And you know what? Somehow I don't think so. Spiritual people, people usually recognize me, my intentions. You would think my daughter would be happy for me to connect with the Japanese Shinto priest as she is a shaman and I am a witch. So in that mystical tradition, we all connected by powerful faith and magic. Indeed we are. But she was shy and I decided to not rock the boat, once again, letting them control me. I should not allow that. I should follow my own inner instincts always, no matter what, no matter who, no matter where or when or how, or what I'm doing in that moment. Might have been meaningful for the Shinto priest to be asked for a photo and a blessing. He was young though. Brecky replied, I saw the monk, because I had to put a photo of him up on my Facebook. Love this mixture of religions. And I replied, me too. It sparks real joy in my soul when we are all together, consciously or unconsciously. You know, Brecky, I saw a Viking vulva for a rune reading on my birthday last year. 2021 and she predicted I would be in my flow and it would culminate in the harvest. At that time I was not sure what she meant but I witnessed the constant flow of blessings 
and small miracles since then. So perhaps harvest time is here. It may not be financial harvests or physical harvests, but harvests of a spiritual nature, finding joy and safety and deep love in my own soul again. That too is a harvest, babies. I certainly feel a powerfully strong sense of destiny, of coming into my own unique power, and yes, of a sweetness and a gentleness and a deep love for life and the gods, almost like a renewal, spring again, two years ago, babies. It's true. It's exactly how I felt. Then I got slammed with Bobo's death, but as I said, it's like he was kind of, I wasn't willingly sacrificing him. I would rather have had my dog with me to this day, but he was kind of a sacrifice. Still upset about that to this day, by the way. Brecky replied, I love to see this happening to and with you. I hope something like this will come for me too, because I have been in the dark and the cold, lonely dungeons of the underworld too long. Everything is at a standstill. My health, my house, no money, no love, and fewer and fewer friends, no energy also. But this interaction with your in Oh, but this interaction with you gives me a positive spark and I enjoy that to the max. And she posted a sunflower emoji. Isn't she lovely? She's so, just so loving and heartfelt and pure and beautiful. In fact, she reminds me of myself, to be honest. We've both, we've both struggled and the dark Hades of the underworld for far, far too long. It's time we both had real love and prosperity and better health and joy and abundance and peace and community and family and true friends. We deserve both of us to have that much. And I reply to her, may you be as richly blessed. It's a constant work putting out affirmations, manifestations and prayers. A constant relationship. And she replied, true, I'm going to renew my altar. Later I wrote, I just observed that Facebook is withholding my grittier, more traumatic memories in my archives and only regurgitating the more pleasant ones. Ergo, silencing my truth or cleansing my feed. Hmm, not cool. But fortunately, I had saved today's memories to vocal media, so I transcribed them and updated them on there. I share these painful but also happier memories for a reason. I fear complete immolation via Alzheimer's one day. Also, my life experiences such as they were are important guidestones for other survivors to tap into. Those who have not yet found the courage to tap into their authentic truth. Sometimes it's not about courage, it's about they're still trapped, almost blinded by their own trauma states and literally can't see the truth or the forest for the trees. And, and I know what that feels like because I was trapped in that state, in a zombie state, as I said earlier, on and off for 20, maybe even 30 years.
What is a life without our unique experiences, healing processes, joys and yearnings? What is a life anyway? A soul, a shadow in a platonic cave. An interaction of body, mind and flesh in a holographic universe. A glitch in time, a stitch in time, an anomaly, a miracle, a stoic, stubborn determination to exist with beauty, art, love and personal meaning rested from the desecration of our lives. Only to be silenced or erased. Our living memories just a refraction in a tiny cosmic gleam in the face of eternity. My daughter commented yesterday, oh, that was a, a question mark after that, by the way. My daughter commented yesterday that I'm crazy to curate these writings and memories and throw them up on my Facebook feed each day. Again, always delegitimizing me and my efforts. Don't do that, Crystal. That's why you're not in my life right now. Perhaps I am crazy, pointless, worthless, dreamless in the psychedelic dreaming. The mirage of my very existence quavering in the dusts of deserts of desertedness. Dry as Ezekiel's dry old bones, desiccated and desecrated. But I bloom like my Strelitzia flower. Mama T's blooming. Blooming mad, but blooming everywhere, baby girls and baby boys. But my memories remind me of whom I am, whom I am yet becoming, who hurt me, who played me, but who parlayed me, whom held me precious and loved me through each day and night and sometimes each strangled moment, soothing me with gifts of love and support. So my dance, my joy, my soul expression in this short fat hobbit body could go on. So thank you to my most beloved ones who love me in ways that are inspiring, edifying and kind who allow me my truth and never deny my reality as it has been survived and at times overcome. And I honour that journey. I truly do. I honour that child, that woman, that mother that danced herself back to full embodiment, alone mostly, but fierce. 1.11pm, marking time with a passionate intensity writhing in my blood. Hail Odin, all the ancient ones that love us. Indeed. Then I posted two Facebook videos that I've obviously had made, but don't know what they are. Because I don't have the titles, so it doesn't really matter now, does it? Oh, I guess if I clicked on them, I'd know what the titles were. If you want to have a look at those videos, they're listed under 27th of September, 22, on vocal media that I'm reading from here of even date. <coughs> Very likely, their videos connected to the 
show out at the exhibition that Jared and Crystal took me to in honour of his birthday, which was lovely. Instead of him receiving gifts, he gave me the gift of his time and energy and the ticket to go to the exhibition, which was very lovely of them both, my darlings. Oops, went too fast there. Ha, ah, we're like two gangsters, the two of us, when we get together, Jared and I. You should see him now, people of Earth. He is all slim and handsome and looks very much like he did when I first met him when he was only 21 years old. Came to work for me in my business. And, um, yeah. Mama T loses all her weight, have to dance even more and eat even less, damn it. I too could be slim and gorgeous, although I won't look like I did when I was 21, because um, when I was 21 I just had a baby and I had a fair bit of weight on me then too. But anyway, not to worry, it's all good, it's all good. 27th of September 2021, 3.57am, not sure if I'm doing this right, but this is what I've managed to twist onto the spindle so far, alpaca, and I can see looking at it, oh no Tanya, I mean I was on, I was on to something there, but it's my first attempt at um, using a drop spindle that Belinda Daniel gifted me. So there you go. So three years ago I started that journey and I've only just started with the spinning wheel that I bought about two months ago. So And again, Belinda gave me the gift of her time and energy and taught me how to to spin on it but I've got trouble because the um I don't know what you call it the the wooden upright that makes it turn in circles keeps falling off and I'm not getting it to work right so I have to fiddle about with that and get it get it how it should be but anyway she did get me started and I'm grateful to you Belinda to you my darling Twenty seventh of September two thousand and twenty. Again, with another Facebook video, I think. And um, you know, photo of my beautiful boy. He now resides wherever beautiful boys go to when they die. I'm thinking Valhalla, waiting for his mama. Am I right? My beautiful Beauregard. Can you even see him? There he is. That stupid flashing blue light. It's like a blue light disco. Can't get rid of it, so there is that. An article about an undertaker who talks to murder victims to relax their musculature in preparation for burial. The article has been withheld, silencing of spiritual worldviews, which I find hyenas. See below comments. My friend Rachel Walsh wrote, how interesting is this article, Tanya? What a find. It is gold. Yes, gold, I tell you. Just amazing. I'm going to talk with my guides about this and ask how the spirit and body do this and if it is a normal or a rare response from a corpse. I find this very interesting. The article was about you know, when rigor mortis sets in, the body's all stiff and you can't 
unfold the arms or unbend things. It's all kind of stiff. Rigor mortis actually only lasts for a few hours, I believe, though, and then things kind of relax again. So morticians are able to position the body, prepare it, and I think they drain it of all the, the fluids and put it in the coffin, and it's embalming, complicated procedure. But with murder victims, this mortician said that he found that if he spoke to them and said, I'm sorry what happened to you, and you're safe now and your attacker will face justice and you can just relax now and be at peace. And he would just talk to them so lovingly and soothingly as if they were still around the body, which of course, in my tradition, we believe the spirit stays around the, the body in the grave site for 11 months. That's why we have special a mourner's prayer we say for 11 months for our parents or children, people very close to us. So anyway, um, when I read that article, I thought that kind of makes sense, that the spirit would still kind of be still kind of attached to the body, especially given the level of trauma, the traumatic violent death they had. And so in him saying, you know, be at peace and you're safe and you're beautiful and I'm going to look after you and prepare you for burial. And they would just kind of, he would find it easier to manipulate, you know, their musculature and get them into position for an appropriate burial. It was um, astonishing, but I, I have no reason to disbelieve that actually, because everything still has a kind of its own consciousness. It's why you have spirits able to communicate with you long after their death, by the way. Sometimes soon after their death, too. Here I wrote, <clears throat> In Judaism, we believe that the soul lingers near the body for 11 months, which is why a special mourner's prayer is recited every Shabbat during that time. It takes time for the soul to completely separate from the body. In um, Buddhism, they believe they, they don't bury their dead for three days because they believe it takes three days for the soul to leave the body. So I guess it varies between different religions and cultures. But, you know, in ours, we believe it takes 11 months for the soul to completely detach from the body or it's... Um, it's astonishing. I know my father-in-law of blessed memory haunted the family home for, yeah, it was about 11 months after his death. He was actually rocking his heavy leather lazy boy back and forth, back and forth. And, you know, when my mother-in-law told me, I thought she'd gone a bit mad, but I went out to make her a cup of tea one afternoon when I was visiting and I witnessed it with my own eyes a heavy leather lazy boy chair rocking back and forth as if he was sitting in it and rocking it. So I just merely said, Hi, Mr. Aarons, just making a cup of tea. I won't be disturbing you. And I just made the tea and took it into my mother-in-law. I went, Mum, I've seen it. And she went, I told you. You thought I was crazy, didn't you? And I sort of went, to be fair, I thought you were grieving. I actually did think she was crazy, but I didn't say that and upset her even more. I just said, oh, I just thought you were grieving and missing your husband. And she said, no, you thought I was crazy. She was a very astute woman, my mother-in-law. I just nodded. She says, he asks me for sex very often at night too. What, I said? She said, yes, she says, he appears beside my bed as a young man in his 20s or when we were first married, very young. He's all standing there all debonair and handsome. We're going to have sex now. Oh, what do you say, Mum? She says, no. And she had the deepest dimples. When she said no, she'd go, no. And then his she'd smile. And, and I went, oh, that's... That's creepy as fuck, Mum. She said, I know, that's what I think too. <laughs> but anyway, he obviously, you know, was still very connected to 
his home and his wife and his family and was thinking about going about things as he'd always done. Maybe playing on it a little bit though because the little bugger would have known he was dead. Appearing as a handsome young man winding up the old girl, am I right? I mean, that's the best kind of revenge ever when you think about it. Harry. <laughs> it just occurred to me just now that he might have been winding her up. But anyway, it was it was kind of astonishing and funny. What do you say? No. <laughs> I mean, you have to laugh. But anyway. I replied to Rachel. I don't know how accurate the story is about cadavers relaxing when spoken to, but it makes sense that we all deserve to be treated with dignity, dead or alive. I get very angry when I'm at a funeral and people speak ill of their dead. I mean, I had a rotten mother. She was rotten to me and rotten to my sister. But the eulogy my sister wrote that my half-sister, her half-sister, had the um, unfortunate privilege of reading out was so awful. I just sat there ashamed for all of them, really. I thought, this is disgraceful. I just put my head in my hand. I was just like, oh, dear goddess, it's just disgraceful. I might speak ill of my mother to this day because I'm speaking the truth. But you don't do that at the fucking funeral. Have a bit of cooth and a bit of grace. That is their passage into the light. Don't desecrate someone's death. Don't do that. It says more about you than it does about them, actually. My friend Rachel wrote back, exactly beautiful. You've got that right. Gemach <clears> Tova, <throat> Yom Kippur starts the sundown. This was back in 2022, so it won't be till the 10 days, the evening of the 12th of October this year. I will not be attending shul. I won't fast either. I just devoured a Sara Lee cheesecake, which will upset my stomach. So the holiest day of the year, apart from Shabbat, will be spent dragging my ignoble tuchus around. Tuchus means ass. There is something very amusing about my self-sabotage. I used to observe Yom Kippur very strictly, including fasting and found it very elevating for my neshama, for my soul. It is, it's a beautiful experience actually when you do the whole fast and you spend the day praying and with your, with your fellow congregants. It, it is a beautiful experience. Sometimes I miss it, but only sometimes. But I've moved beyond all that now after decades of epic nastiness. The Holy One and I have formed a strange kind of symbiotic relationship. I often talk to that energy I call the multiverses, and sometimes they talk back. Lots of love energy in the past few days, so I feel very connected with God in my own strange ways. Here I posted a um, a piece that was posted by someone called Jill Badonsky. In 2020, she posted it. Kurt Vonnegut tells his wife he's going out to buy an envelope. 
Oh, she says, well, you're not a poor man, you know. Why don't you go online and buy a hundred envelopes and put them in the closet? And so I pretend not to hear her and go out to get an envelope because I'm going to have a hell of a good time in the process of buying one envelope, not with Australia Post, you won't, you got seriously ripped off. They charged me $2 for a fucking envelope. It's like, what? Anyway, continue writing, Kurt Vonnegut says. I meet a lot of people and see some great looking babies and a fire engine goes by and I give them the thumbs up and I'll ask a woman what kind of dog that is. And I don't know. The moral of the story is we're here on earth to fart around. And of course, the computers will do us out of that. And what the computer people don't realise or they don't care is we're dancing animals. You know, we love to move around. Yes, we do. And if it's like, oh, sorry, and it's like we're not supposed to dance at all anymore. Let's all get up and move around a bit right now, or at least dance. Thank you, Kurt Vonnegut. He's onto something there. Stay grounded in your own body, mind and spirits. And um, here he is with a very, <laughs> very cheeky, life-affirming smile. But if you knew how much they charge for envelopes these days, you'd be shocked, Kurt Vonnegut. It cost me $15, right, to post the first instalment on that dreadful Brisbane City Council fine that was based on Mishigas and malfeasance, in my opinion, because they switched over the signs, the bastards. $322. I had to beat them down from 644 by the way, because they wanted to fine me twice, and the second fine was so full of errors, it was clearly bogus. Anyway. So the first instalment was $60 for, for a thing they call here spur, which is you pay off your fine slowly through the government, right? Through, kind of through the courts. So, all right, I thought, okay. I, ha I should have actually fought that fine even longer, but I just gave in because I'm tired. They get me because I'm tired and I can't be bothered and it's too much stress and life's too short to be wasted on stupidity and stress am I right so I'm paying the fucking thing off but I resent it so anyway I go down with the first installment and I said to the Australian post office lady which I hadn't been to a post office in years because I avoid them too to be honest I said oh I need to send this um, money order to spur uh, to the Brisbane City Council blah 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 Oh, yes, she says, it's $13 to pay for the money order. What I said? $13 for a money order, for them to just give you the equivalent of a cheque. All right, so I pay for that. And um, she, I said to her, oh, do you have an envelope? And um, so she pulls it, two, it can't have been $2 for the envelope. Anyway, it was a lot, and then it was a lot for the stamp, and I went. I think it was two dollars for the stamp too. But anyway, it was it was a lot. It cost me an extra fifteen dollars in the end, and I was like, "What?" So to have that initial payment paid on spur cost me seventy five dollars when it should only have cost sixty, or I guess, you know, maybe sixty five if you had to pay for it money order and a, and a stamp it's just highway robbery they they robbed me every which way i felt financially raped by them i really do it's disgusting 
But anyway, um, so that got that process going. So now I pay them through BPAY, which doesn't cost anything. And bing, bam, boom, babies. You know, it's happening in a far out way. It's all being dealt with. But I was just shocked how they sting you every which way. You're trying to actually do the right thing and you get financially brutalised. So, um, yes, I shall be buying or using my own envelopes in future, not buying theirs at the post office, that's for sure. By the gods. Everything's just a big, gigantic fucking con or a scam now. It's Everything's overpriced beyond belief. And it's just beyond evil, quite frankly. 27th of September 2019. I'm looking forward to going dancing tonight. Alter Egos are playing. Their bass guitarist is delightful and hams along with me so well to you, Scott. See, I've been writing about you and Ramjet and all the other bands for years, babies. <laughs> I'm feeling calm and content just for today and every day of my life from now on. There will be love and rejoicing, epic cuddles with my non-human loves too, and perhaps one day an epic cuddle with a human man too. Winky face. I know, I know. Psychedelic dreamer, dreaming again in her fairy tale gone wrong existence but hey even a queen of the fae must manifest winky face ho hum not that i'm an actual queen of the fae that is the real titania i'm just her little freaking namesake sake this one this one was smooching up against my hand i wanted to show you but she moved when i reached for the phone you done doing all the poopy kins for a while now, Charlie? Huh? Are you all e evacuated out? Are you emptied out of your own bowels? Oh well. The sea monkeys have my money. Rumpelstiltskin is holding my lovers at bay, come what may. A brave and beautiful soul will fight his way through the crowd to claim me. I will set him my baleful Medusa stare, sorry, glare, <laughs> same thing really. And if he survives that, he is the one. Usually, though, the one who survives my fiery wrath only ever manages a platonic relationship as I burn too bright sometimes. <laughs> you kind of have to laugh. It's all good, all very good. Mama T burns with a zest for life and for her own glorious, triumphant becoming. And if it means... I walk and dance on this earth alone, then that is also a blessing. Even if I do miss certain human pleasures occasionally. <clears throat> By the way, YouTube audience, this does not mean you get to predate on me on my YouTube channel. It's not directed at anyone in particular, and it's not meant as um, an invitation for your sexual frotterings, by the way. Just grosses me the fuck out when you do that. Have a bit of respect, by the gods. Trigger warning, child sexual abuse and or rape. I had my debrief today, which was fairly intense. I told my doctor I was feeling positive after hearing yesterday's news that Trump is going to be impeached, I hope they follow through. I've never liked that man. Never. Not even 20 or 30 years ago. 
My doctor told me that he remembers the day Trump was elected, that I was extremely disassociated. I said yes, because I recognise a narcopath when I see one after being raised by them and I knew how dangerous he would be. He also said I had warmth back in my personality as during the will dispute seven years ago, I was so very, very angry and brittle. I told him I burnt the divorce file and two of Case's albums, but found it impossible to burn the will dispute as for some reason I'm still holding on to that anger. I told him the anger is somatizing as digestion issues in my body and I can't tell, like the chicken or the egg, which feeds into which first, laughing out loud. We talked about George Pell claiming he is innocent and could not rape the boys through his vestments. I said it is outrageous as men can easily rape through clothing and I myself had been complicit in my own rape with former lovers, in particular the dead homeopath creep. I was so in love with him at that time period that I refused to see that I had been manipulated and raped and let my body guide me by vomiting for three hours afterwards. My body usually tells me when a relationship or brief romance is dangerous and wrong. But of course, when I was young, I was good at compartmentalising and hoping against all rational hope that someone actually loved me. They did not. Real love is a rarity. It's why dopamine is so, ex is so addictive and why poets, musicians, artists mine it like loose feeders for inspiration. Anyway, my doctor told me I'm a vastly different person to when I started therapy with him nine years ago. Insightful and warm. Hmm, I wonder. Perhaps I will heal in time. Allow an authentic lover into my life. Blossom. Here I wrote, Abhorrent systemic abuse of racism and marginalisation of the poor needs to stop in response to an article by Ospol Daily. An Aboriginal woman, this will be a trigger warning for many of you, so go and make a cup of tea. An Aboriginal woman goes to the police station with fractured ribs to make a report on being beaten and robbed. The police strip her and hold her in jail over unpaid speeding tickets and not tapping onto public transport properly. She's afraid she's going to die. Someone might say that's terrible, but why be afraid she'll die? Well, not long ago they arrested an Aboriginal woman for unpaid fines and she died from complications of an infection in a broken rib. Racist policing and sentencing that punishes poverty kills people. The article was posted on SBS. Aboriginal robbery victim jailed for unpaid fines after seeking police help, which is a trigger for me personally as a white woman because I was under constant threat for 18 months living at Waterford West and I would go to the police and they would laugh in my face. At one point I demanded to see the superior officer and the cop on the front desk said, what do you think we are, the army? Smirking at me again, I said, you're the paramilitary, go and get 
your officer in charge. Now! Anyway, out the back they heard me starting to scream at this cop and the officer in charge, the sergeant, comes out what seems to be the trouble. Tell him. He said, that's terrible. I'll deal with it straight away. Made a phone call to my enemy, the ex-lover, who was threatening myself and my children with rape and mutilation every day. Told him to cease and desist. Well, he didn't cease and desist. The police should have made sure that they prevented that from continuing on, by the way. Systemic abuse of women and their little children damaged us, all of us. It's why I still subsist on a disability pension to this day, because of their inaction to protect us. And by the way, there's 54 women this year who weren't protected and who are dead. Don't ever forget, this is the society we live in now. It's a miracle that myself and my children are still alive, given what we were put through. 27th of September, 2018. So yes, I completely resonate with my Aboriginal sisters on how badly they would be treated, even worse than me because of their blackness. It would be 10 times worse. And it was pretty fucking bad for me as a white Jewish woman at the time. I often wonder if it was a form of anti-Semitism too. Because you don't meet many Jewish women who were poor and marginalised and broken and strangled and beaten down. So they all had a ride. All of them, including members of my former community. It was disgusting how we were treated. Happy Rosh Hashanah, by the way. 27th of September, 2018. So Mama T and the inner child Brat went grocery shopping last night. We managed to spend $182 of my pension money, which is a, a big, big chunk of my pension money went on food. We managed to buy real food like meat and veggies, but there was a lot of inner child junk too. Chippies and Whitaker <laughs> gourmet chocolate. And I put a big smiley face with lots of um, brackets, which means me jumping for joy, doing my little dance and full of delight and glee. And lollies. I knew I was being bad, but fuck it. I'm skirting the edge of my own suicide again. Very triggered lately, probably because of having to fight off that awful creep at the casino, plus feelings of distress about my useless, hopeless existence. But now I have lollies. Yay! Death by carbicide and sugar. It's funny how that never quite works out for me, isn't it? I guess one day it'll get me in the end. So Mama T is going to pull her boots up and be out dancing tomorrow. She can't go on like this. Constant moribund suffering is not good. If you see me being joyous and wild and carefree, be fucking happy for me. It's all I can manifest after a festy, fetid life. It is a mark of my own honour and courage and exuberant desire to thrive. Like a jive turkey, bat out of hell, berserker, bodicea, queen of the fae, whatever nobility I can embody. I manifest my own happiness daily, but it sometimes has to be eked from the abyss where that albatross death spirals into. Like smoke on the water, it can evaporate into that dark, pardon me, dark hole in microseconds. 
Don't cry for me, Australia. I've got this. Trigger warning. Incest, child sexual abuse. Watching Miss America, Marilyn Van Den Van Den Den Burr on YouTube as recommended to me. Powerful. It's about her being an incest survivor. Quote. Most of us are between 35 and 50 before we can do the healing work to confront our childhood abuse. I was 20 when I spoke out to my filthy, treacherous family. 30 when I first entered therapy. It was not until 2010, aged 45, that my current psychiatrist began psychotherapy with me to unpack decades of abuse that began when I was six. Emotional, mental, physical abuse, even before that age. Another quote. If I could not be believed at 53, then how could I expect anyone to believe me as a child? I was also not believed, or rather, devalued and invalidated. Only my childhood friend believed me and tried to assist, my little hero. Like Miss Van de Burr, my mother knew. She admitted it in 2000 when she told me that my sister and I were, and I quote, dirty little girls who deserved everything that happened to us. I cut ties to her until a brief time in late 2004, early 2005, when her husband made false claims and put a domestic violence order on me. Can you believe that? And got away with it too, because of our defunct court system. And then again, I made myself available to her in 2008, until her death in 2010, after she was granny dumped by her stepdaughters upon their father's death in July 2008. It is now 2018 and my paedophile enabling abusive mother still haunted me on Yom Kippur, 19th of September 2018 at Shul via a year's call list gives you chills it really gives you chills just thinking about that the enormity of that eight years after her death such was the power and control my family of origin held over me even in death they still cleave to me or claw at me they really are that vile really but every day of my life, I express my freedom, my right to my own life, and my love for myself as a survivor. Love I share with my daughter Crystal and my tribe of fellow survivors. Twenty seventh of September. 2017, 2 a.m., a bottle of cheap but delicious wine, Belgium chocolate cake, <laughs> chicken curry and rice dinner, insomnia, happiness, in brackets, sleep is for the dead. Later I wrote, my lovely Karen is here, she slept over. We were woken early by a housing contractor who came to assess the rotten wooden steps that need replacing. Interestingly, still waiting to hear what happened with that because one came to do the measuring up and the quote, nothing's happening still, but it's due again. The sweet young man promised the job would be done in two weeks and also randomly gave me... <laughs> his McDonald's breakfast 
which he had lost his appetite for. It's a bit odd, but anyway, food is food, am I right? So I heated that up in the microwave and was rather grateful for all the gifts of love and friendship that I have received lately. I had a bad night waking up every two hours, so wide awake I could have thrown a wild party and I needed to pee four times during the night. I had a bad night last night, why well, I'm looking a bit wrung out. I was up all night again, by the gods. I think it's because I had chicken soup and I put cel celery in it, and celery is meant to be good to, you know, help you pee and clarify things. No, with me it just makes me even worse. It's bad. All the things that are meant to be good for me nearly fucking kill me every time. <laughs> it's getting bad though, because you've got to have some healthy nutrients, am I right? Not celery and not beetroot either. And not onions and not garlic. I'm running out of things to eat. Menopause is not for sissies. I'm utterly wrung out, but still happy that my friend is here and feeling very loved and supported. I have a psych debrief at three, so I will lie in bed and rest my body and maybe snooze a bit more as sleep deprivation makes me hypomanic and euphoric, in brackets, or feral. So hopefully I will settle myself down without too much trouble. Hoping, wishing, Praying for rain, which has been huddling over us all day like an intemperate, recalcitrant whore. Like waiting for one big, orgasmic release. Everyone's nerves are frazzled and energy meridians are stuck in limboic anticipation of precipitation. It's annoying. I'm so glad it rained during the night and at least most of this morning. Handsome boy just had his home cooked dinner and is saying thank you. My angel face, my beau regard. Oh God, I used to throw the worst ones out of my shop. No time for evil bullshit. And it's a meme. When a rude customer says they are never coming back. <laughs> it's true. You really do have this kind of smile. <laughs> it's like, yeah, bye. I won't miss you. Don't let the... Okay, hit you where the good Lord split you by the gods. Twenty seventh of September two thousand seventeen. I made this tomato onion crispy couscous dish, bit fiddly, but delicious. And uh, no, I was violently ill because of the onion. The onion babies did it to me in the end. But it tasted nice. <sighs> I think I might go back to bed when I finish this YouTube video. I'm quite tired. It's not good, is it? What can we say? It is what it is. 27th of September 2016, 4.48am, dawn song. I have not slept much, been in bed since 1.30am. I had a lovely afternoon and evening with Jared and Harvey. We took the dogs for a walk in the forest. We spent time relaxing in my garden. Later we cooked dinner, then Jared helped me finish off the design 
of my table. Now I need to varnish it. I'm very pleased with the result. I am happy. Hopefully I will sleep soon though. Exhausted. Oops, where'd we go? Exhausted. Table varnished. The first coat. Most of garden watered. Transplanted some heliconias this morning. Mower guy been and gone. Lawns look nice. 27th of September 2015. 8.57 p.m. Just woke up, slept 13 hours, so thirsty. Got to make something to eat and drink. I had a nice time last night. Mission X were playing, oh sorry, were great as usual. I made friends with some friends of the replacement bass guitarist. Nice people. 27th of September 2014 I had an awesome night out dancing with Karen, Shauna, Sam and Sam, two Sams. Burst were fantastic as usual. I'm now waiting for my bus home. My feet hurt, my coccyx hurts from moshing, my neck hurts and my legs hurt. I don't care. I had a great time. I won't be able to walk tomorrow, but it is worth the pain. Wow, fucking impressed. Long overdue. So just now, as my bus was almost arriving, a brawl was developing across the road. A voiceover announced that they were being monitored on CCTV and police were on the way to arrest them. It was really trippy, but I yelled out, Woot! About bloody time! And the bus security guy agreed with me. It has become so dangerous in George Street, they have the whole place under surveillance. I am so pleased that finally the government and police are managing the Central Business District better. Then I got a free bus ride home as the go-card machine thingy was kaput. 27th of September 2013. Just woke up almost midnight. I fell asleep at 3pm. The swelling and pain from the three injections was too much. I hadn't slept and wanted to shift my body clock by sleeping at five or six, but couldn't hold out. Now awake with a headache and the right side of my face still a bit tender. If the nerve in the molar doesn't settle, I may still have to endure an extraction. This tooth hurts more than, I, than when I had the front implant and crowns done. Very weird. I must be getting weak in my old age not able to withstand the discomfort. Mind you, this tooth has been giving me jip for months. I think I will take a painkiller and try to go back to sleep as I want to go out Friday night. 27th of September 2011. My roses are sprouting again and some even have new buds. The profile photo is from last November when my new awesome Brindabella Raspberry Tiger bloomed and I'm so looking forward to what she produces this year. She's got one bud on her at the moment. It's really pretty. I need to buy some sudden impact and some more sulfate of potash though. My grape is back sprouting lots of new leaves, which is a miracle as I thought it had died and I have heaps of raspberry suckers. So happy. 27th of September 2010. I'm so grateful to my daughter Crystal and friends who have been very supportive to me lately with my emotional bust. It's nice to know that I'm cared about 
and loved. Sylvia Shine wrote, Rest assured, you are loved and cared for. Come on, Tanya, be brave. Properly days are coming. That's what Joe of Eshalom used to say in times that were stressful. And yes, those days always came. Just have faith. Love you, Sylvia, Job's comforter. And she sent me seven kisses. God has blessed you wherever you are now, Auntie Sylvia. And she's right, you know. Jo Shine was right too. The good days always come back. No good things last forever, but no bad things last forever either. You've just got to hold on and keep dancing and walking and singing and talking and being through the muck and the mire. The sun will always shine again. You can trust in that. And on that note, copyright Tanya Desiree Aarons. Bye for now. Have a beautiful day wherever you are on planet Earth. And remember, never ever let the bastards grind you, me, us down. Bye for now.